And the one uh, time I saw it, I played with you, and you immediately died, and you had the red armor, so that was fun. <laughs> that was that was my experience. I, I'm convinced I'm just cursed when it comes to this this armor. Like, I swear I never see anyone with it. I know it's like, is it a like 7% drop chance? It's quite low. It's um, it's quite low. I think it's somewhere around the 3 to 5% range. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, okay. Hey, guys, let's take a look right. here. KLA going to be uh, trading blows with, I do believe, the members of 521. Both of them playing at ranged here as we see shots coming out. Nobody wanting to engage, but CXZ trying to push into that forward position. We do see Yin a little separated from the team. CXZ wanting to capitalize on that, but Yin able to reposition and find their way back. Now 521, though, caught between the members of KLA. Yin going to find a good hit onto CXZ, though. Wants to keep the pressure up here. CXZ able to avoid the whisk, but not able to avoid the double blue charge coming out and just completely wiping away their HP. QGG, a oh, little focused that. here on the 521's Pampy, trying to keep them away. They are able to find the elimination, but their other member, a little caught out here by 521. 17 able to get some heals back off, still trading blows. CC wanting to go to the shop, find some pots for themselves. Here we go. Unique able to get on to 17. 17 going, yo, yet oh, again, yeah, able to find the parry on to Unique. Gonna keep the game alive here. KLA splitting things up in a 2v1 and leaving 17 in a 1v2. 17 able to hold their own though. KLA now with the ultimate online. Gonna start oh, looking so for big. these picks. Unique just trying to break away as we see Yin go down and 5-2-1 regretting the engagement here. Unique able to find the armor swap into the white armor, but the chase will continue. 5-2-1 just trying to keep the members of KLA distracted, maybe looking to run this back or potentially just waste the time of KLA as the other two members go and look for a revive. Unique going to throw the whisper out, catches 17 out, but the grapple cancel going to keep Unique from following up on it. KLA comes out on top and picks up their first three eliminations. 17 played that so goddamn well. He just ate all of the attention while his team were able to find an isolated player and get a man advantage. Absolutely clutch play there by 17. Able to hold out long enough as we cut over to DRG. Got himself in a fight versus EWG. 14 right now on the run. EWG getting absolutely minced by the fan as a uh, Wujin 98. They've got the Draco Storm on side as well. So this is not where EWG want to be fighting, grouped up, low health bars. Moonlight has been taken down, but with this Bane's breath, it's just slowly going to be eating through them. 14's thrown the ultimate down as he's just looking to use it as a reposition tool. And this gives DRG the opportunity to go for the pickup, but they're actually trying to chase with the kills. Not going to be able to find it, going to be able to pick Moonlight up as J Team actually right behind LXY, sitting next to nine as. Are they gonna pull that trigger? Yes, they are. Instantly coming out with the Tessa Charm onto two. Nine gets himself a lot of his armor taken away. They are gonna get the mech out here just to keep themselves up for the Ferrier. Cannonball's coming down as they are just gonna mint through the mech health bar. Low armor, not gonna be able to survive this. J Team, they had a bad game last game, so they are looking to come back into this one. Tidy up these players. Another charm comes out from LXY. This time it's DRG jumping into the fight. Yo Tortimer coming out as a response. Quick Wu Shen from J Team into a Bane's breath where they go down. There's no way it went that bad. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Lee able to give them the old ankle break and break away, but it does look like they spotted him out. Grapples are on. Lee caught out with a cannon. He is going to have to one versus three and play this bloody well. And I don't know if he's got enough fuel in the tank. Whoosh in with the fans, able to take him down. That was just a terrible timing on the uh, Wuxian ult. No one at blame, just giga unlucky. Oh my goodness. I mean, it, that that's the moment where you've got to look over at your Wuxian and be like, really? The, 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 this is what happens, and this is, you know, it's funny enough, I, I love Wu Chen as a hero, I, I love these sort of skirmishing comps that exist around him, right, I love his abilities, but he is by far one of the highest skill ceiling characters, because when it, in terms of his ultimates, his Fs and things as well, right, you can either absolutely be a godsend for your team, or you can teleport them into a brain's breath, and cost your entire team all of their lives, and that's exactly what we just see happen there, so it, there is... 
there's very little room for error when it comes to Wu Chen. You, you can even teleport, cancel out ultimates, and cause all kinds of grief. To be a good Wu Chen player really means your awareness has got to be top tier in terms of Naraka. About Ah here while we're talking about this, unfortunately, just getting shredded by the members of Fun Plus Phoenix. And this is off the back of their early game resurrection, so there are no options to get back in the game after this. I'm pretty sure Fun Plus Phoenix here gonna be sending Bao Da back to the lobby here. Yiron really trying to hold it out, but the the triple shot coming in from the bow from Xiao Yue and Dong Ping just keeping him locked down. There's there's nothing that Yiron could have done there. One plus Fiend is going to pick up the elimination there. Balda, unfortunately, that is going to be it for their game number two. Yeah, pretty rough one on that front for them getting knocked out as Alliance got themselves a kill onto KLA. CXZ taking them down. GG, QGG, sorry, on the run. Fan, really a favored uh, weapon now. Having a lot of presence in the meta in trios. I'm assuming solos as well, to be honest with you. It's a very strong weapon. But Bo, unable to find the rest of KLA. As, uh, it's like they were able to break away, but two members did go down for KLA, so they have to use their revives. But Alliance, just playing it nice and, uh, nice and chill off that one. Only got the two kills under their belt. Had that amazing Justina game in the first game of the day. Really, really fun to see them picking that one up. And actually took third place overall in that last game. So I'll definitely keeping an eye on them. Alliance are a team who uh, they've been so hit and miss across the last few years. It's nice to see them actually having some level of a showing and actually looking, you know, pretty, pretty respectable as a team. So we're we'll interested to see what they can do going forwards. Is uh, BBE, unfortunately, not as amazing as a start. As they did in the previous game, is a uh, GG the winners of the previous game. Also, had a very quiet start to this game. Zero kills, not a lot of anything. But they have got themselves in a fight here versus TE. Question is, are they going to full commit to it? It looks like they are because LYD getting jumped onto. Leo also jumping into the fight as CXJ finds himself in a lot of danger here. The charm has been placed down into the Viper Sun as well. There is just no break here for C CJ's. Able to hold himself alive for just a little bit longer though as Ham takes down LXM and TE got so much control, just so much crowd control over this as CJS just being passed around crowd control to crowd control, really unable to do much of anything. Quick Wu Shen out there from the TE as they actually reposition and shield themselves back up. GG gonna get themselves a pick up onto LXM. But if they get re-engaged onto, this could be really, really dangerous for them. GG though, keeping the pressure up. Actually looking to turn around onto Han. Han. Not a lot of armor, not a lot of health as CJ gets himself countered back. Has to be very careful that parry is able to re-pick up his jewel sword. Just trying to re-engage him, but the Tetris charm does come down, and that is going to be a really dangerous thing for them. Leo, low HP, but the Tetris charm comes in at the perfect time. But Free Frio able to secure a kill onto Leo as TE. They let up the pressure, and they are paying the price for it. They let GG reset, reheal, and return this fight around. The uppercut comes in onto Han as he goes down. GG, gain control. And from a dire situation, able to find two kills, pick up their teammate, and save the day. Ah, uh, man, this is this is two huge mistakes, two games in a row for Team TE here. Uh, I, I'm not sure how they're going to recover from it, but hopefully coming into our next game, they're going to be able to find a better footing for themselves and learn from these mistakes going forward. And this is not very typical of Team TE. TE typically does well throughout the regular bi-weekly and then even into the bi-weekly finals as well. But we're going to head into these Realm of Yangs. This is going to be Alliance heading head-to-head -head here with Team BBE getting ready to come in here on this cannonball comp. We're going to see Ivan go topside, but get grappled out there almost immediately. I've been back down on the ground here with the dual blades looking to go through that soul slash coming in from the members of team Alliance Revenge trying to lock in with that soul slash continuing to threaten it. I've been potentially looking for the parry there but he's going to immediately immediately go in for the ultimate smart choice here as well as we do see the counter ultimate coming in from the Temi but I've been able to avoid getting locked down in the sand siphon there with the teleport revenge still continuing to be the target here the healer absolutely phenomenal 
target selection coming in from Team BBE here, trying to make sure that that zipping it wastes all of their abilities as soon as possible, and they can eliminate them so that they can't get them back off of cooldown. BBE going to change targets now, though, as they know all of those heals are on cooldown, and they want to maintain the pressure that they've been able to get onto Alliance. Unfortunately, so far, nobody able to connect an elimination. Roy Shishi here, a little caught out, and oh my goodness, he steps forward into not one, but two blue charges. Is going to eat both of them there, and it's going to cost Team BBE here as Alliance takes control of the fight here into a 1v3. I've been left by themselves. Wants to try to at least secure an elimination here. Goes for the oh, F. Will do. pick up revenge off of it. I've been here. Might not be able to clutch out the realm of Yang, but they at least pick up one more point for Team BBE before they get sent back out to look for those soul blooms. That was a beautiful little turnaround. One versus three. Just getting that one extra point. Making that, you know, a little bit closer. JDG also losing their realm of Yang. Everybody else cashing in. Uh, two, uh, sorry, 5-2-1 were able to pick a Draco Storm up. They got that one from a Mora's Blessing. They did not win the uh, the realm of Yangs. If there's four buffs on screen and there's and you've had the first realm of Yangs, all of the all of the vermilion birds mites are going to be the ones in the realm of yang that's that's always the easy way to tell who won a realm of yang and who got a mora's blessing because the realm of yang definitely going to be a a big one drg actually they won there so long ago they've only got a minute left on it it's they have eaten through that timer fbx just using this time to do a bit of shopping get themselves some um some soul jades get themselves set up as a uh, lyd here on their lonesome, no revive, no way they're gonna be able to survive this one. As down they go, GG cashing in on a kill, and that is GG now. Starting to come online, uh, tidying up. That was, I believe, the last player who from earlier they had to deal with. GG quite happily able to take that kill, and uh, they're on the board. They are off to a slower start than the previous game, but they're off to a start, so they can't really complain. JDG. <laughs> Two and a half minutes left on this uh, on this Roma Yang debuff, so they need to go find someone to take out. Otherwise, they are going to be unfortunately knocked out of the game, and someone has to go down for these Roma Yang debuffs to be cleansed, whether it's you or your enemies. Alliance getting themselves in a fight here with FBX. FBX still got plenty of time left on this for Millions Birds might, so they are happy to full commit to this fight. Jauhu finds himself in a little bit of danger there. Bo able to do a lot of work to him, but does get himself pinned against the wall as well. Strips away a lot of HP there from Water. Sandstorm comes out. Water caught in the uppercut. Bo putting some damage down on him. Switches target now over to Dong Qing, who is unrelenting on revenge. Hunting him down. Dong Qing getting himself in a bit of danger though. Bo trying to put a little bit more work in with this golden staff. Absolutely obliterating the health bar of Dong Qing, who's just consistently pestering revenge. Bo trying to be a, a bit of a guardian angel for his healer here. Dong Qing now deciding to turn his attention towards Bo, but in the meanwhile, revenge gets taken out by the rest of FBX. The moment Bo led up, FBX kept the pressure on and they take them down. Vermillion Birds might burn. And a bunch of kills into the pocket of FPX is now JDG looking to cleanse themselves of this Rama Yang debuff. Ultimate coming out from two tick here on the Yotohime. Able to catch out onto Roy BBE. Amazing start to the last game, but every time we cash in on them, they are having a rough go of it. Two tick able to take himself the kill. Oh my goodness, uh, coming through there, BBE, like you said, in an extremely rough position. They do not have a, enough Dark Tide coins to even buy a single member back of the team, JDG. Trying to capitalize there, still with at least one player with Yang depletion there, but given their position and the number of eliminations, they just got probably enough Dark Tide coins in the back pocket if that player gets eliminated to just go ahead and buy them straight back. They don't need to keep the pressure up. We're going to see Ivan skirt across here. J team doesn't see him, sees the members of KLA and JDG coming through, and they're going to start this fight up here in Plumed Castle. J team going to back off and let KLA and JDG duke it out here. JDG going to get that last soul bloom that they need to cleanse that last bit of 
of that Yang depletion there. KLA down to a single member here, 17 just hiding. This position not strong for them though, because the bell down below, very easily able to give away their position. They need to slide away very quickly. If that bell gets popped, 17 immediately gonna become visible. We're gonna see here XLY repositioning, potentially looking to go for that bell. The bell currently not available, so 17 has a few seconds there of safety. J Team does miss them. And I think when we cut to 17, maybe they had just got done hitting that bell, so they were not the one visible on the map. As we turn back to BBE here, they've been able to get Roy Hihi, sorry, Roy Shishi, back in the game, but the members of Alliance dogging him down here. Gonna utilize the F there to break away from the combo, but it's not enough. The overhold on the spear there gonna come down on top, and Roy Shishi gonna be sent back yet again. And then unfortunately, I do believe we just see Ibin go down to the Yang depletion at the exact same same time and that's gonna be it for team bbe here in game number two team gg coming in looking to try and secure this more's blessing they have committed multiple ultimates here and they're gonna get chased off of it extremely unfortunate the members of team gg is five to one come through just able to pester them straight off and uh, secure that more's blessing for themselves yeah you got the miss it might maybe not the most desirable one but they're gonna be able to use it spot people out and Pump them down, the damage reduction also gonna help them somewhat here is unique. Keeping the pressure up. Right now they've uh, found a couple of members of GG LXM in a little bit of danger. 5 2 one just swarming onto LXM who desperately trying to break away, but they are not gonna be able to get away from 5 2 one Down they go. GG, who have had a absolutely amazing start, losing a player early gonna really be detrimental for them going forwards into this game i believe the rummy yanks did spawn up yeah fbx able to pick up the draco storm cjs finds himself in a little bit of danger down he goes and suddenly gg are looking to potentially be out of this game they've only got one player left um luckily it's the player of all the money so if they can <laughs> there you go they bought uh did they buy rebuff yeah they did i was about to say i thought they did uh, that's only onto one player, so they're still going to be down another player. So, ultimately, for the side of GG, not the most uh, not the most useful thing in the world. They are going to be in a little bit of a deficit as uh, JDG able to cleanse themselves earlier of that Romeo Yang debuff after losing that. Are actually on the hunt right now, see if they can find themselves some members of Bowder to take them down. <laughs> but it looks like Bowler have got himself on top of the uh, on top of the big big cannon gun. I can't remember what it's called now. But Ballista. Ballista. Thank you. I had a complete brain fart on the name of that weapon. <laughs> uh, you know, the ancient the ancient weapon that is a historical weapon. Uh, yeah, on top of that Ballista, able to control it. And Bowler do lose Yi Ran because Yi Ran wasn't under the the loving gaze, the loving caring arms of a Ballista. They do lose a player, and Peak also on the run away. Two tick keeping the pressure up, and Bowder could find himself in a real deficit here. Already down one player, being hunted heavily by JDG. Once they get into that grapple range, there it is. It's going to be hard to break away, getting chain grappled. Peak just trying to make as much of a distance between them and two tick as possible, but two tick with the staff putting some serious damage in. They're in that blueberry phase as well. They've only got the blue armor, so it's easy to strip away, it's easy to take them down. Peak is on a zipping they do have a lot of healing but when you've got two people wailing on you you ain't gonna be lasting for long peak goes down bowler only a single player left but in comes the charm onto three by lxy j team now opening up on to the members of jdg can't get in some serious dangers down he goes lee able to take him out with the katana some serious work coming in two tick gonna pop that yota ultimate probably just using it for the teleport to break away but j team scatter into multiple multiple directions wushen oh out from j team so they can reset okay trying to get picked back up cannon fire coming down though they're gonna try and keep them off on the revive as much as possible two tick unable to get away and down he goes another member of jdg falls as j team unrelenting on the pressure pp goes down J Team cash in on the kills. Beautifully played third party from J Team. Yeah, absolutely well played. 
We're going to see J-Team here with a seven eliminations under the belt, a much better performance than they had in game one here, looking to come into that late game here on the skirmisher comp with as many eliminations as possible under the belt. It is zone three collapsing onto zone four with 21 players left remaining alive in the lobby, and things are going to start getting very interesting. We are past all of the Realm Yang's gold armor is getting ready to come into play. So a lot of these teams are going to look to pressure those Moore's Blessings as we head forward. And this is this is very interesting. This is something we haven't talked about quite yet today. But we do have those new Banes coming in in the following zones. We've got one in Zone 4. I do believe one in Zone 5 as well. But first, we're going to cut back to a replay. We'll come back to that here. BBE here trading with Alliance inside the Realm of Yang for a second time here. Trying to lock down. Oh, no. We're going to go over. It's going to be JDG and Fun Plus Phoenix going head to head. Dunkling here just trying to hold on for the team into this cannonball comp as we're going to see huge shots coming in from the ferry, but Dunkling able to avoid it all. He's got two of those Furins left looking for an optimal moment to use it. We're going to take a ton of damage as he gets bounced back and forth between a PP and a Keke here coming in. We do see, wait, is that armor old coming in for Kurumi? Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, armor variation old coming in for Kurumi. What an interesting pick. I haven't seen that all game from Fun Plus Phoenix. Now, two tick going to go down onto JDG as Fun Plus Phoenix turns this fight around on its head, able to pick up those eliminations and come out on top inside that realm of Yang. But back to talking about those uh, potential Banes coming through in these phases. Those Banes will be dropping the same time every game, right? So these teams really need to think about going forward with these Bane changes when they are taking fights and committing to them, as well as the potential to be able to commit teams to fights that they don't need to be taking, given that the Bane potential to drop in the middle of everybody is there, right? So these teams need to learn how to play around these new Bane's Breath. Speaking of it, there we go. Fun Plus Phoenix is going to be shoved back against the wall to this Bane's Breath as they try to come in and secure that Moore's Blessing that comes through in this phase. It looks like they're going to be able to get it. They need to be careful how they position here with the Bane at their back. It buys them a little bit of extra safety. This Bane actually comes down in a favorable position as it looks to try to stop some of those teams pressuring up behind them. Fun Plus Phoenix will pick up that legendary armor that they need. I do believe a legendary hang sword as well going to leave them in a extremely strong position heading into the late game. Yeah, really nice little pick up there from FPX. And that's more like FPX in my opinion. They're a team who are always so good at getting Mora's Blessings towards the end of the game. I don't know how they do it. They always consistently are able to pick them up. EWG, just a little bit too late to the party. All of the goodies had been taken. All of the goodies of worth had been taken there from that Mora's Blessing. FPX now just going to find themselves in a position to reposition and set up for the next stages. This is uh, KLA quite comfortably got himself in a nice spot right now. And I, that's that's kind of the point of the game we are at where... You know, the Rumble Yi Yangs are all done. A lot of people are just going to be doing a mixture of either shopping, like Bo here from Alliance, or it's just going to be a uh, a section of the game where everybody goes and gets gear. Goes and gets some, not gear, sorry, gets a, gets a home, gets a place to <laughs> to buckle down and wait out until the, uh, until the zone changes. And then they can potentially look to kind of translate that into some more kills. It's just going to be a little bit of odd poking here and there. Here we take a look at Fun Plus Phoenix here yet again. Again, the Bane really coming in clutch for them, right? They had teams approaching from the backside, which could have potentially sandwiched them out, but they were able to position, uh, and luckily the Bane decided to drop on the bunch of teams that were behind them, and it buys them more than enough time to easily secure that box for themselves. And this is what I'm talking about. A lot of people look at the Bane's breaths coming through and think it's just RNG. But because they always consistently drop during the same time and phase of the game, it comes down to your macro knowledge, right? This is a thing that these pro players are going to have to adjust to and learning how to uh, position around them in your favor, right? Either by not over committing to fights during those phases of the game so that you're not caught out, you're not caught off guard by the potential Bane coming in. We're going to see J Team here, Lee with the Aurora Burst, just threatening the space with it. The silence on that being absolutely huge. None of these teams want to pressure into it but again 
these teams, if they are going to be able to learn the the macro decision making around those banes, are going to be able to buy themselves from fairly distinct advantages. And here we go. Here's that last bane coming in that I talked about during zone five. It's going to spawn right before the Morris Blessing comes through yet again. And this is the thing. It is consistent everything every single game right jake so these players yeah there is some rng to this bane where it's going to drop on the map but it is typically going to drop around players you know what phase it's coming in you know exactly what time it's going to spawn on the map and because of that you can make some decision making to not only mitigate the risk of the bane but to potentially raise the risk for other players it's going to take some time for the teams to adjust to it but i think it's going to be extremely good once these teams really learn how to utilize that bane to their advantage yeah absolutely it's it's another one of those changes we were talking about just before the um just before this game started you know there's all these there's big changes there's also little changes and they always do force the players to kind of adapt and change up their game style and i think it's what keeps the game fresh you know even little things like this where you know oh there's an extra bane's breath and it, it spawns at this time and you know the players now have to play around that every time they always have to think about it but that has now passed that is now done as um Don Jing just trying to find some work with the cannons 22 players and eight teams left in this game so Definitely moving at a slightly quicker pace than game number one. But to be fair, game number one for some teams was their first game of the entire year. At least in a competitive sense. Um, their first time jumping into everything and kind of, you know, get, getting the uh, getting the rust off. Getting yourself warmed up going into the rest of the season. J-Team just found themselves a nice little tower to hide in. With a belt right under it, so they need to be a little bit careful. Taking a little bit of damage on the side lane as uh, Lee just ringing the bell. Just ringing the bell. J team are going to be forced out of their little hidey hole though, so they need to they need to get Wiggle on. Get himself set up into a more comfortable position. KLA just healing up here in a bush here. CXZ. Just going to join the rest of the team on the high ground. <laughs> Yeah, EWG, man, that Aurora Burst just is so much coverage for this team. Oh my goodness, the Merciless Havoc coming in from EWG as well. Don Queen uh -oh. tries to reposition, gets caught out. This could be bad for Fun Plus Phoenix. We're also going to see the cannon shots coming in from top. Fun Plus Phoenix sandwiched between multiple teams here. Don Queen trying to keep the game alive. Position as close as they can here to neutralize as much of that cannon as they can. We're going to see the Merciless Havoc coming in, but Water gets caught uh -oh. out on the backside by J Team. J Team oh. trying to make something happen, but Don Queen with a huge shove coming in from the Furin, but J Team instantly able to avoid it. Don Quinn caught out there in the. Oh my goodness, Don Quinn yet again still alive here. Nobody capitalizing on the stun coming through from the Tessa. The jabbing potentially coming through to make something happen, but Don Quinn almost completely caught out. Zhao Hui with the tether trying to get the resurrection back onto water. Nobody wanting to give them the time. Don Quinn able to slide back under by himself a little bit more time here. DRG sitting up top with the cannon. Coverage on all of these players. Fun Plus Phoenix able to slide back in. It looks like they might get that resurrection back onto the board. Wu Jin 90 Eight going to come out there of the pillar looking to make something happen. We're going to see Don Queen covering for water here, trying to use that Merciless Havoc to buy them time to get those heals back up. KLA bunkered up on the backside here. Need to be careful. Fun plus Phoenix quickly pressuring onto them. I do believe KLA down to two members. Baldau wanting to pressure onto them as well. Will push them out of the hiding spot. EWG coming in. DRG's Wu Jin going to come in with a massive parry. The rest of the team pressuring up, but DRG not wanting to full commit to the fight as we have zone six collapsing onto zone seven alliance will lose revenge to the edge of the zone here drg able to pick up the elimination and the rest of alliance looking like they're going to go down to ewg as lane is immediately slain there off the back of the musket shot Wu Jin coming in here on the huge yodahime ultimate pumping out damage onto the members of fun plus phoenix just continuing to keep the zoning alive ewg here in the mech creating pressure across the zone there onto kla drg's Wu Jin gonna find the mech as well looking to come through and 
start creating some huge pressure. Dong Quing wanting to come in as well there off of the step. That jabbing going to come through and do a ton of damage there to Wu Jin. Dong Quing just looking to keep things alive here for Fun Plus Phoenix. They were able to get water back into the game. So Fun Plus Phoenix finds themselves in a strong position here as the zones continue to collapse. 30 seconds until the final zone will collapse down. Dong Quing going to pressure over, but Fun Plus Phoenix only able to capitalize on the one elimination into KLA, not both of them. They will find one onto EWG very quickly, though. DRG very quickly going to run out of ultimates here. The stagger coming off. They just have Moonlight remaining in the UHA on ultimate. Dong Quing going airborne here, looking for a capitalization onto something. They do still have two ultimates left remaining. They can use that Temi to zone out these remaining players, and there's not a lot of them left. EWG's 14, but solo pressured to go ahead and pop this Yodohime ultimate, trying to make something happen here. Unfortunately, they were not able to capitalize onto Moonlight. They wanted that elimination. Fun Plus Phoenix wasn't going to let her have it, and Fun Plus Phoenix is going to find both. Ladies and gentlemen, 